Now to start off with the rotor head assembly, um, the blade manual calls for bag uh, H and um, you know this was here are all the items that was inside um, bag H. Uh, so what I did was just took it out of the main bag. Everything's by the way um, very nicely you know packaged. I just happened to take this out already uh, to speed up the process. Uh, but here it is and they are all kind of individually um, grouped together as you go through the manual so um, for you know just to speed things up you will I will be jumping from you know from bag to unbag and you will we'll go through a you know a series of um, jumps here as I put things together so um, we will start with putting together as the manual said um, H1 bag um, together with uh, H2. Here we have um, all the items that were in bag um, H1 and they were um, kind of lightly put together like this portion was installed on top uh, from the factory so they just made sure that all the parts were there. Um, by no means uh, they definitely this is not something you would, you would just tighten down so there is no Loctite in here. Um, they just put this kind of together uh, so they are, you know, it gives you a point of reference when you build it, which is actually very, very helpful. So um, um, we will definitely go through every single piece of this, uh, these parts, make sure we put Loctite on them and we put them down and torque them down uh, properly. So um, right now what I would do, um, the beginning of the manual, indicates that this go together uh, but I would what I would rather do uh, before I start with this is um, we'll concentrate on this rotor head block first and get all these pieces built and loctited and torque uh, to proper specs you know uh, before we insert the main shaft so um, I will jump to the next portion when I take this apart and uh, we'll go from there Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, focus on um, the swash arms right here. So um, the mixing arm. So what I would do first is, as you see, this is put together from the factory, um, but you know, by no means it is um, done. You know, there's no Loctite in them. They, like you see, they they come off uh, fairly easy. So what I would do is uh, definitely take these out one at a time uh, and there's no washer here so just the actual screw itself and um, get some very light coating of um, Loctite on here. Now I'm not, I'm just using uh, this Loctite that I already have, I, the, the kit does come with Loctite, blue Loctite. Um, but I think I'll just save that for uh, some other build as this Loctite's, you know, been, I've had this and it's open so it's more convenient for me to use this. So as you see, I just put a small drop on it and what I do is I make sure it's spread on the threads. Um, what is important that most people make a mistake on is they put a big drop or big glob of Loctite uh, on the screws and when they insert it, it you know actually bleeds out and gets onto the radial bearings uh, or the bearings around it and that will you know in time destroy uh, the bearings so that's not good practice so what you need to do is definitely just put a very light coating of Loctite or one tiny drop and then spread it with your fingers you know you kinda you know you get it out of your fingers and wipe it with a rag um, and then that's what you would do just have this you know thin coat um, when you insert this. Now, um, another practice that I recommend is, you know, actually, um, you know, dipping these screws in uh, alcohol uh, to take, you know, to get rid of any grease that will prevent uh, the Loctite from uh, doing its job. So, uh, for the purposes of you know speeding things up I will go ahead and do that and I'll come back and I'll get these two bolts um, cleaned up and Loctited actually I'll do four you know including all these other sides and then we'll put it all together I have taken out all the small 
um, bolts here uh, for the arms and clean and lock tight of them so both sides um, so before we put this on the rotor block um, I want to take the chance to discuss uh, these washers that is uh, that are included in the kit so um, per the manual there's these uh, washers that are uh, stepped you'll see there's a small step um, on one side of the washer and it's smooth on the other side so the way this works um, their design is uh, the step portion um, actually is the one that leans on to um, you know the bearing the radial bearing on pretty much any part of the helicopter as I noticed on the manual so um, so like this for this piece right here I put the step portion outside facing outside to the thread of the bolt as that's the piece that will be resting on to uh, the radial bearing here on these arms so I take um, the other step washer here um, and this is the step portion and that will go in to the to the side that you know to face the step portion is going to be facing the radial bearing uh, inside the arm so the smooth sides outside right here so um, this piece you know after um, we put Loctite on this we'll be bolting on uh, to this rotor head block like so um, and I will go ahead and do both sides and uh, we'll continue okay so what I've discovered is you know um, me trying to be smart and trying to um, skip the actual first step of the manual is um, you would definitely need to I, I put these arms on the rotor block uh, but they're not tight alright so there there is Loctite in them so they're fresh uh, they're not tight yet uh, but you definitely need to insert uh, the main the main shaft into this block before you can tighten these um, two screws as it is also helping in um, compressing and grabbing onto the main shaft so go ahead and in, um, insert that main shaft um, and then you know go ahead and um, put in the Jesus bolt and I will go ahead and tighten this uh, later as um, I do have Loctite in here already and I don't want it drying up so <clears throat> you do want to insert it and as you tighten this down I would suggest you do it evenly where you go back and forth um, each side as when you begin tightening down um, the head block starts clamping down onto the main shaft so we'll continue to do this and this is where this comes in really handy as you slowly torque um, these bolts down this um, hex driver set has a very good uh, size grip that you can grab onto so Crank that down, both sides evenly, and I would say that is it. So I'll go ahead and grab, um, you know, just a nut, something that'll hold that counters this uh, nut right here, and I'll torque everything down and go to the next step. So now that we got. Um, the main shaft uh, bolted and tightened down um, and uh, the swash arms here um, snug uh, actually tight and uh, evenly tight uh, uh, torqued down as I showed you earlier um, you got this piece now um, the next step um, per the manual is um, inserting uh, the spindle shaft uh, through the rotor head um, and putting installing the dampers uh, along with it now um, I have already um, cleaned the inside of the spindle threads uh, by actually dipping this um, in a little you know container with alcohol made sure everything's clean because this is a very important part of the heli that you know 
obviously when everything's put together this bolt holds the blade grips where the blade rotors are attached so very important that you clean this and clean the bolts that will be attaching to this now um, one thing I'm very particular of to you know, make sure it's kept clean is um, when we insert everything together into the rotor head um, these dampers uh, call for some grease to be uh, you know to be uh, applied inside as the spindle goes uh, through them uh, the problem with that is I have myself ran into is you know you put you know decent amount of grease in there and then when you shove the spindle through is you get grease again inside the spindle which is not a good thing so uh, when I do that now what I, I would say is I grab the spindle bolt and you know basically just screw it into the spindle so you know, just so um, actually you know one would just work one side was fine but I'll just do two just for the sake so um, what we'll do is um, mount the dampers inside um, the rotor head like so oh, I'm sorry my mistake um, this plastic piece actually goes uh, in between uh, gotta be careful not to damage this thing there, there you go so uh, this plastic piece actually goes in between so what I will be doing is um, you know applying grease to this side here um, inserting it and then applying grease on this other side and uh, closing it in to you know keep put the spindle in the center we'll come back when that's done okay so now um, we got the uh, spindle and the dampers all lubed up and uh, inserted right there uh, the next step on page two of the manual is putting the blade grips um, installing the blade grips and the accompanying um, hardware that goes in it uh, the thrust um, washers you know with the with the bearings and I will go through step by step I lined this I lined it all up in kind of the order it goes in so um, one important build note is this this washer brass washer has a side that has a step and the side that's smooth so the way that actually goes in is the smooth side will be facing the damper and the step side will be leaning on uh, the bearing uh, the radial bearing that's in the blade grips so that goes in like that Fo followed by the blade grips grip itself um, and um, please take note from the factory it, it comes you know assembled loosely uh, I already took both of these bolts out and um, cleaned it with alcohol and locked item together just so I could speed things up so goes in like so oh by the way before anything else I'd like to explain um, an important build note also on these bearings um, that will be going in inside the blade grips so um, there are two uh, um, bearing uh, races one with a bigger hole and the way to find out which one it is is you basically insert it into the spindle and you will be able to rock it back and forth so this is the one with the bigger um, diameter hole the other one as you can see if you insert it barely has any movement so that's the one with the smaller hole so that one is the one that goes um, outside when you put all of these together okay so let's put this together got the blade grip uh, thrust uh, washer the race with the bigger diameter hole okay get in there okay and then I have already uh, packed this bearing with grease um, you know for inside the there's an open face on it and I already have grease in there so what I like to do is I always like to do is I always want to insert this with the open face um, into facing the inside of the helicopter now the reason I do this is you know if you have it um, the other way which but still works by the way doesn't doesn't um, hamper the performance but 
it tends to fling out everything, all the grease that I put in. Um, so what I like to do is I mount it with open face inside, kind of keeps helps keep the grease uh, in there longer. So that goes in like that. Followed by the race with the smaller diameter um, hole right there. And then finally, um, I'll just put this down. I got grease all over my hands. The washer and then the blade grip bolt. So grab it so get um, get some uh, Loctite into this. Remember this is a very important part of the helicopter and I definitely want to have a pretty good amount spread in there. Now remember what I mentioned earlier um, don't put a big glob in there that it'll leaked leak sorry leak onto the thrust um, uh, bearings which I've done actually on some of my helicopters it just destroys the bearings so I got it coated pretty evenly um, all, all throughout around the bolt and so this just basically goes in Okay, so that completes um, one side of it. So what I'll do is I'll put the other side on and uh, continue from there. Okay, so I finished um, putting together the other uh, blade grip, same order as the one I showed earlier. Um, do want to um, bring this up that um, you will need two uh, three millimeter uh, hex drivers to counter um, the other blade grip bolt when you tighten everything down. So I've done that already for this. So you, you, you definitely need to get another uh, three millimeter. So give it a good crank. It has to be really tight. Um, remember, very important that you know these bolts do not back out of um, the spindle. Uh, so there was also one question on the internet that was posted that after he tightened everything down, as he had very notchy um, blade grips or it was too tight. Um, that's pretty common actually. What it is is when you first build these heads, uh, the whole spindle and all the company you know, components that are in there is not centered yet. And usually everything centers when the heli helicopter spools up. So, But if you're just concerned, uh, when I did this, uh, one side was also tight. And all I did was, you know, give it a good, you know, pull um, and, you know, kind of centered it. And, you know, I got really nice and smooth um, blade grips. Uh, as you fly the helicopter uh, and the dampers get a little worn in, uh, it'll start, it'll be even more butter smooth. Right now it's smooth, no notchiness. Um, and I, this, there shouldn't be any issue at all once you get it up in the air. So for the last portion of the rotor head build, uh, it is just basically as simple as um, attaching this, uh, this wash plate into the rotor head. Now before you do that, uh, I would encourage you to go through every single uh, ball that is attached to the swash plate and check to make sure there is Loctite. Uh, I have already done so with this and um, it came with Loctite from the factory. Uh, every single ball that I pulled off actually had Loctite in it, which was really good, but I still went ahead and, you know, removed it, cleaned it, put my own Loctite, and tightened it back down. So, just to complete this portion of the build series, we slide the swash in and um, snap it on. And that is it. The rotor head for the 550X is complete. I will see you guys again in the next uh, part of the build series, which will be the main frame of the helicopter.